So recently I moved to Hackintosh from my Windows machine. So there are several reasons why I did this huge change and even in my video I expressed like Hackintoshes are not legal and they will cause you so many errors but then after I tried it myself I find that it is more optimistic than Windows so in this video I'm gonna show you guys how I actually got into Hackintosh and why I got into Hackintosh and what are the struggles and the errors and the problems that I faced during the installation and after the installation too so without any further ado let's get started so as you know Hackintoshes are gone out of support when Apple moved to their M1 chip because before that they were using Intel's processor and also it is it is so easier to do Hackintosh in your Intel machine but after Apple's huge decision everything got so worse and so many uh, Hackintosh forums are closed and only few are available online but still there are some groups who are providing you with the coolest Hackintosh guides you will ever find on the internet so that's how I actually got an idea and also as you know the reason why I installed Hackintosh or the reason why I considered to do Hackintosh on my system is because of Xcode. As you know, I'm a full stack Android and a web and also a Windows developer. I used to develop so many apps and softwares and websites, but however, I got an idea and also an interest on iOS and Mac applications. And I was wondering how to create it, and then I came across the software called Xcode, and then I found that Xcode will not run on Windows so which means I need a Mac and I actually thought about buying a Mac but I cannot afford thousands of dollars to buy a Mac or a MacBook for this purpose so I thought of creating my own Mac with my own rules and with my own specs so I actually got into an idea of Hackintosh with this um, with these reasons only and also not only for that I find that I, I found on internet that Windows is not more optimistic as like as an Hackintosh so I was like okay let's give it a try so because because I tried so many operating systems like Linux and Windows and so many flavors of Linux out there so I tried almost every single one of them and then I am going to try to install Mac OS if you ask me I actually had an idea to create a VM actually you know virtual machines and actually I created a virtual machine to develop my Xcode applications but I don't find it very well because it was laggy and as you know virtual machines does not use the entire resource it will use only a limited amount of resources in the computer and it will run into problems when I actually execute the Xcode and all those apps so i don't have any other choice to rather create a mac or buy a mac and as you know i actually chose create a mac because that's more affordable and more optimistic so the first problem that i ran into when i started the hackintosh process is to find the right guide because not every guide will help you to install hack sorry mac os onto your system because every system is different it's not like windows or linux you can just follow one guide and then install it on any system this is hackintosh so this is very different from any other os out there so i need to find the right guide which is required and which is recommended for my computer mine is a custom built and it is a very cool gaming pc in that case i need a separate guide for that or else the guy which matches all my specifications and the components that I used in my system so in that case I find a in that case I found a pretty cool guide on this website called olarila.com which are um, you know this olarila.com is the providers of Hackintosh's 
or the Hackintosh forums nowadays because Hackintosh shop is closed now and only this olarula.com is online I know I, I don't know whether there are a few other websites out there so there is this method called open core so that's what I chose okay because my system is like that so and I don't know why but I fortunately had all the components which are required to install the hack OS oh sorry the Mac OS on my system so in that case I have all the hardware which is required to install Mac OS and I already had a guide which is a pretty cool guide on olarida.com link is in the description box down below and I just need to install it right and also I had Windows on my system and my system has one terabyte of internal hard drive and uh, and um, it has about 120 gigs of SSD, SATA SSD, and that one TB hard drive that I talked before is an NVMe M.2 SSD, which is pretty fast on my computer. And also, I do have an external one terabyte hard drive for my file storing purposes or for my company or any other things to store files. I'll use that external hard drive. So, since I have one terabyte of hard drive, I just allocated almost nothing. Actually, since I said before, I had a SATA SSD, so I just uh, installed macOS on that. And I find that it was a bit laggy because of drivers. Because of the drivers that my computer had. Because, you know, my computer had an NVIDIA GT710 graphics card and macOS does not support NVIDIA. Even when Apple was giving out the Intel, Intel CPUs with their macOS, there are no NVIDIA chips on their Mac, so there are no other go to use them. But I actually found a pretty cool guide to even overcome that issue. I find that, and also the common error that I faced is the boot looping process. You know, when the Apple logo will appear and it will boot loop it automatically. When you, when you just switch off the PC, it will automatically restart and restart and restart. It will do it an infinite amount of process and you will never get into the desktop. But I didn't face it uh, immediately after installing. I faced it when I actually trying to configure the graphics card in my PC. So that's where that the problem started and then the next thing is the software availability so I you, you know Apple was very strict about the software updates and their and their, and their apps so I need an, a really uh, so I need a latest version of Mac OS which is the Mac OS Monterey because Ventura is still in the beta release and I don't have a stable release rather to choose uh, choose the Montre release so I chose Montre and I installed Montre macOS on my PC so that's also one of the issues that I faced the next thing is the hard drive allocation as you know as I said before that I actually installed macOS on that 120 gigs of SATA SSD which is pretty insufficient for my use because I'm gonna use Xcode my brother's gonna use Logic Pro and I also we uh, will be using um, Final Cut Pro so in that case I need some more space first and Windows had one terabit of hard drive because I allocated Windows as the primary OS but then I had an idea to what if I use Mac OS as my primary and my daily driver so I actually what so what I actually did was I had installed Windows and I installed Mac OS on my one terabyte of hard drive and for some reasons for some reasons to you know we used to do gaming on this channel called TGT with my friend in that case I need Windows because games won't support on on Mac OS so in that case I need to install Windows that's why what I did was I allocated um, I, I allocated 200 gigs of free space I, I just created a partition with 200 gigs and then I actually raided the partition with the SATA SSD that I had so entirely I I will have 300 gigs and also for Mac OS I will have the entire one terabyte of hard drive with 200 gigs will be will be wiped off but I will still have 800 gigs of space on Mac OS. The next thing is software. You know, I use a lot of softwares for editing, for, 
for the coding purposes and in that case Mac will be pretty good for me so it, it is it's not a big issue for me here but the next thing is the Wi-Fi and all these stuff the driver stuff this is where everything gets complex okay so as I said before I need to install graphics driver but I how well I failed I failed and the third time is only I will be uh, I, I I had able to get into the installation of my graphics driver and even before that in on the booting process I actually need and particular I actually need the respective EFI folder for my PC because not every EFI will be supported by every PC because every PC is different from others in that case every generation of computers will have different types of EFI and in my case I had an Intel Core i7 9th gen processor which is 9700 only not X or K okay just 9700 Intel Core i7 processor which is a coffee lake processor and I had an EFI partition for that so it is available on the olarilla.com I'll, I'll still give the link in the description box you can go ahead check out olarilla.com and it's awesome guides and forums with there and also after that the main thing that I faced was Wi-Fi Wi-Fi was not working on my computer after I booted into Mac OS it's because of the graphics sorry it's because of the Wi-Fi card drivers not supported on Mac OS I looked up to the solution on the internet but I cannot find any solution for that so in that case I don't have any other choice rather than connecting it through and through an Ethernet cable like this so I have my router and I had connected it with uh, my PC using Ethernet so it is not that much hard in some cases but also the next thing is also and another thing is my friend came to my home the next day after I installed Mac OS on my system he was carrying his laptop it was a Lenovo ThinkPad T450 and it had Windows 10 on it and still it had only 400 gigs of hard drive and he asked me to install as a dual booted system like me see I have dual booted it which means I have two OS I have Windows as well as Mac OS on my system so every time I start my PC I will be getting uh, an option a menu about what OS should my computer boot it should be whether it can be Windows or it can be Mac OS or it's it's my it's my option to boot any OS on my computer so he asked me to do the same thing on his laptop but this is where everything got worse actually his laptop had Intel Core i uh, i5 um, Intel Core i5 fifth gen processor, which is a Broadwell processor. I think so. Broadwell processor. Yes. So it is not the same EFI partition like mine. You know, Coffee Lake is different from Broadwell, right? So I need to create a new EFI folder and find the right EFI folder or directory for that processor but however I managed to find that and then I booted into that I installed Mac OS but this is where everything got worse because he lost his windows and all his data so things got worse so what I recommend is at the final conclusion if you are having an idea to do Hackintosh on a system I will recommend you to just go ahead because I've been using Hackintosh for almost three days and I've installed all my apps like all my coding IDEs and my video editing tools like Premiere Pro or Photoshop or After Effects or Dacity. Everything is working so good and also the IDEs like Android Studio, PyCharm and uh, Intel IJ Idea, Visual Studio Code. Everything is working so good, so neat, so cool. And also the common myth of this is um, Hackintoshes will not get out of support because every time the Apple restricts the the access to their system the Hackintosh community will automatically recover and give the support to their users so it's not that much hard and also you may ask me well will I be able to to install Mac apps like from the App Store and stuff well you can install it because it's just like Mac okay so you can install it even when you are signing in with your Apple ID 
you can do that even i did and i got a call from apple itself so it's not that much hard because because the common myth is about uh, you you will not ever get the get the support from apple well you will get the support but not technical support like if you had an issue with your component apple will not insure you so that's the problem here and also hackintoshes require a huge time because you will be facing with code and all those stuff like uefi booting system and everything should be working on your computer so you will be facing a lot of technical terms and technical things with the hackintosh in my case it took me two days to understand how how when a hackintosh system works and how to install hackintosh so this is my opinion about hackintosh and still i have hackintosh on my system let me just show you so here is my hackintosh system so we are actually working look how cool it is look though the launch pad everything works good like brave browser or or safari everything is good and stuff like that so that is the entire mac os you know the hack os so yeah and i hope that you like this video if you did don't forget to give a like share and subscribe to cyber we are very very close to reach 1k subscribers it's a huge huge milestone for us so yeah i'll meet you guys in my next video bye